Hitman Joe watches his target, and the bodyguards who defend him in a Budapest opera house while posing as an ordinary theatergoer. Joe heads upstairs as soon as the show starts, and everyone is seated. A few minutes later, a bodyguard spots a shoe behind a curtain and investigates, only to discover that Joe set up a trap, killing him with a knife and concealing his body behind the curtain. Joe shoots the second bodyguard as he passes down the hallway before locating his target on the balcony. Joe shoots the man in the head after he declines his offer to pay three times, his existing payment. The woman flees as he asks the man's date to keep quiet. He then turns to face the stage, briefly locking eyes with Maze, the show's main attraction. He makes the decision to go, but as he does so, he begins to feel lightheaded and has a headache. After witnessing the woman fleeing downstairs, another bodyguard tries to get in touch with his employer. He rushes to investigate and discovers all the bodies when he doesn't receive a response. The bodyguard starts shooting as the security squad prepares to arrest him after noticing him carrying a gun. Because the other cop hides to call for assistance, he is only able to kill one. The bodyguard then hides on the balcony, and the officer shoots him through the door as he pursues him. The bodyguard chooses to leap from the balcony and land in the center of the stage as all of the theater's lights suddenly switch on, while another police arrives at the balcony to fire down the bodyguard from a distance. The dancers and the general public instantly panic and start to flee, as Maze and the others flee. The terrified throng unintentionally pushes her to the ground, causing her to lose her phone and stomp on her hands and feet. Joe spots her at that same moment and carries her outside with her phone. He waits for Maze to become distracted and vanish since he gets a headache again as soon as he sets her down. Joe discovers he still has Maze's phone when he comes home. Before bed, he drinks a lot of booze and takes some medication. Joe visits the doctor the following day, and after a battery of tests, the doctor speculates that Joe might be experiencing the aftereffects of years of head trauma. Although the test results won't be available until later, the doctor has already suggested that Joe start looking for a new employment. Following that, Joe goes to see his handler and close buddies V, who agrees that Joe deserves a getaway and a chance to meet someone great. After much deliberation, Joe returns Maze's phone to her at the dance studio. She flirts with him and gives him her number out of gratitude. Joe soon regrets throwing the number in the trash on his way out and retrieves it. He nervously texts Maze in the evening, and they decide to go on a date. Even though Joe never discloses his true occupation, they wind up having a great time together over dinner. In the days that follow, Joe splits his time between dating Maze and continuing his mercenary work in various locations, including France, Romania, Austria, and Switzerland. He and Maze begin spending nights together as their connection deepens. Unfortunately, the medication is no longer as effective, and the headaches never go away. The doctor breaks the awful news to Joe when the test results are finally available. He suffers from a neurogenerative brain condition. Joe only has three months to live because there is no cure for it. Joe declines the doctor's offer of treatment and palliative care because he is still in shock. Rather, he returns home and begins looking up information on the illness on the internet. There is no treatment, as evidenced by the numerous videos of people losing control of their limbs. Joe considers ending things and reaches for a gun, but he tells himself to keep Maze in mind. After extracting all of his money from a hidden safe on the floor, he gathers all of his weapons and tosses them into the river. Joe visits V the next day and declares his intention to offer $2 million for his own head. He wants Maze to receive the insurance money, even though he would have self-deleted and life insurance wouldn't cover it. But regardless of how much he pays, Zvi won't sign a contract with his best friend. Joe then visits Antoinette, who was formerly an assassin and is currently employed as a handler. Max, a vicious killer, serves as her bodyguard. Antoinette is happy to place a contract on Joe's head, since she harbors a personal vengeance against him for killing her father despite the fact that he was her mentor. Joe requests that she activate the mission at midnight because he still has some tasks to complete. Antoinette uses the Assassin app to select the hitman for this assignment after Joe departs. She first gets in touch with Lovedal, who is in Switzerland completing another business. He declines the mission after seeing the message, claiming that the $2 million is not worth it. The message then reaches Guang and his group, who are in a Prague karaoke club. Thanks to cooperation, the gang, who had been disguising themselves as employees the entire time, now emerges to murder their targets in a matter of seconds. Joe's contract is gladly accepted by Guang. Antoniet also forwards it to the Longo's brothers, who are tying a man to their bikes and pulling simultaneously to split his body, just in case. Joe meets Maze that evening without realizing Max is pursuing them. When Joe ends their relationship, Maze gives him a final kiss before sobbing and walking away. After that, 
Joe returns home and begins drinking while recording the whole truth in a message for Maze. He hits the wrong button and sends it immediately before it's finished, even though he meant for it to come after his death. Joe receives a call from his doctor, who delivers some important news. While Maze hears the message, the findings of another patient's test were combined with Joe's. He is in excellent health and has the potential to live a long life, so he won't die. Joe prepares a trap because there are just five minutes before midnight. Soon after, Guang and his group show up and expose the laser sensor at the door using cigarette smoke. They simply sidestep it and move farther inside as Joe declares he is terminating the contract while speaking from his hiding place. Guang, however, taunts him and reminds him that agreements must be kept. Joe is waiting to fight in the bathroom when a gang member follows the voice. Joe can easily overwhelm the man, who is exceptionally skilled in martial arts, and toss him through a glass wall. A woman then slices his back with an axe, but Joe kills her by pushing her down on the shards of glass and dragging her throat. The previous man becomes enraged and attacks once more, but Joe fractures his leg as he tries a special kick and then throws him through the wall. After that, Joe is attacked with a sword by another gang member, starting another altercation. Joe catches the man's arm to break it and disarm him after they trade a few blows. He then throws him against a column to kill him. The after several unsuccessful blows, the final gang member uses two large blades to attack Joe before stabbing him in the shoulder. He is able to keep battling in this manner, and gives the woman extra forceful blows, which results in her losing many teeth. Joe kills Guang with the knife from his shoulder after Guang throws it at Joe's leg, leaving only Guang as a farewell. Joe lights Guang's smokes and then leaves the flat, setting up a trap that blows up his house and kills the toothless woman. The gang's automobile explodes when her body is thrown through the window and hits it. Joe calls Antoinette on the street using Guang's phone and informs her that he is terminating the contract, but allowing her to keep the money. Because she still wants to exact revenge on her father, Antoinette becomes enraged and declares she will double the bounty. He enters an abandoned structure after hearing several bikers approaching, where the Longo's brothers are waiting for him, performing stunts on their bikes to launch an attack. Joe dodges a few of their blows, but he is consistently taken down by the majority of them. Fortunately, he discovers a pipe close by, and the next time, a brother tries to kill him. He beats him with it to knock him off the bike, and then steps on his skull. Joe kicks the bike's front wheel, sending the other sibling flying as he cries in rage and accelerates. Joe can now flee by stealing the bike. In the meantime, Antoinette assigns the mission to Europe's top hitman. Love Doll is still enjoying himself with ladies in Switzerland. But he eventually agrees when he sees that the reward has increased to 4 million. The Mackenzie brothers accept the mission in Scotland as well, and they celebrate by smashing beer bottles on each other's heads. The party girls in a seedy club in England pose as dancers in order to murder every customer with weapons deftly concealed in their skimpy attire. When a client tries to defend himself, the females are skilled fighters and can quickly defeat him. A gang of crooks in Spain are preparing some happy powder for sale, when Bidiz interrupts them with amazing talent. He kills every man in the room using dancing moves and knives in his boots. Joe visits Zvi in the interim, who treats his wounds with adhesive. Zvi can only provide Joe some leftover explosives from another operation because he is merely a handler and does not own any firearms. Zvi's spouse offers to assist as well, giving Joe a very intense massage that even cracks his neck. Joe's headache, lightheadedness, and double vision all cease at once as a result. Love Doll soon reaches Budapest via rail and Antoinette provides him with all of Joe's details, including Maze's address. She also arranges for her cousin Money to come get Love Doll, although Money is incredibly unpleasant and rather foolish. Antoinette made a vow to her uncle that she would also teach him how to be a hitman. They approach Maze's building and encircle her as she leaves. Love Doll punches Maze unconscious to take her away after she kicks Money to bring her down. As part of their strategy, Zvi disclosed the information. Joe prepares all of his weaponry in the castle. The first people to arrive are the Mackenzie brothers. Joe throws a grenade at them, as they enter the castle and then emerges to engage in combat. Joe succeeds well against a single brother at first, but when the siblings band together, they are able to grab him and kick him into armor. Joe puts on the armor's gauntlet and resumes fighting, using the metal to deliver strikes that are more potent now. However, Joe is still brought down by their collaboration. Joe takes advantage of the moment when the brothers begin a pointless argument to set off one of his traps. Joe quickly pulls her body to a corner, sets off her grenades, and then hurls her against the other woman, killing them both simultaneously with the blast. Before the explosion sends Joe flying through a door, he is able to seize their gun. While waiting for him, 
but it swiftly disarms him and puts on his headphones so that the music can direct his movements. A hand-to-hand -hand battle breaks out, and because Bidiz is such a skilled fighter, he can easily keep up with Joe. They continued hurling each other about the room, and after Bidiz injures Joe with his boots, Joe forces him to take off his headphones in retaliation. They pick up a pair of swords to continue fighting since punches are ineffective. After a few minutes, Bidiz finds a gun and starts shooting after Joe disarms him. Joe hides behind a table and sets off another trap, which destroys Bidiz and leaves only his boots in its wake. When Lovedal's crew arrives outside, he recognizes all of the hitman's cars at the entrance, and instantly assumes this is a trap. Money is instructed by Lovedal to keep an eye on Maze while he goes to look into it. Maze convinces Money to let her get out of the car when Lovedal disappears, saying she wants to stretch her legs. She then grabs a tree and pretends to fall in order to knock Money unconscious. In the meantime, Lovedal uses Maze's phone to call Joe and offers to release her if Joe turns himself in. When Max shows there with an entire armed crew, they are compelled to end the call. After entering the castle, they start to explore, taking cautious to stay clear of any traps. Joe detonates a bomb while hiding in the shadows, taking out half of the team. Joe then stealthily approaches a soldier, stabs him, takes his gun, and uses it to murder the remaining men in the room before making his getaway through the back door. He is forced to drop the gun by Lovedal, who is waiting for him in the garden. May shows up in Money's car, drives over Lovedal, and then opens the door for Joe before they can come to an agreement. Max's surviving troops make futile attempts to open fire as the pair flees together. As they travel, Joe eventually reveals to Maze everything about the disease confusion and his true line of work. He emphasizes that he only shoots criminals and not civilians, and he says he is retiring. Maze is pleased to hear that because she is expecting. After Maze faints, Joe discovers a bullet hole in her neck, and they resolve to make amends. He decides to abandon the vehicle and leads Maze to the nearest building, a church. Luckily, the bullet only caused minor injuries to Maze, and she immediately woke up. The fact that she agrees to marry him makes Joe very happy. Since neither of them is Catholic, there are no witnesses, and they lack a marriage license. The local priest is dubious. Ultimately, he consents to execute it in exchange for their confession. When Joe confesses that he wants a second chance at life to become a father, the poor priest, who has been appalled by all of Joe's murders, offers to grant him redemption in exchange for his vow to retire. Joe wears a grenade pin as a ring as the modest ceremony gets underway. Love Doll interrupts them and starts shooting. In an attempt to save Maze, Joe tackles her. The priest is shot instead. A grenade is tossed inside the church abruptly, and there is enough smoke from the explosion for Joe and Maze to flee with the priest. Max, who begins arguing with Love Doll about whose contract this is, is the source of the bomb. Love Doll starts shooting and takes down some of Max's men, while the couple tends to the priest wound in the back room. Joe returns shortly after and kills a couple more troops. As the grenades continue to fall and explode, a small fire is started. Max detonates another explosive as Lovedal attempts to engage a soldier in hand-to-hand -hand combat, causing a scaffolding to collapse and confine Lovedal. After that, Max begins searching the church, killing his final victim due to his injuries. They get into a standoff as Joe tries to surprise him from behind, and realizes he has run out of ammunition. Max boastfully declares his victory, but Maze blasts up his head first before he can fire. As all is going on, Antoinette prepares to depart the nation. Zvi arrives, tells her that she, like her father, breached the rules, and then shoots her in the head. The now recovered priest and all of Joe and Maze's friends attend their formal wedding at a later date. Joe is prepared to begin his retirement, but Maze advises her husband to take on a few more jobs, because she understands how costly raising a child can be. 